I don't go around thinking everyone should wear turtlenecks or everyone should wear this or that. I don't believe that. But I think that modesty has its benefits. I think modesty is positive. And I think modesty, if you choose to do it, if you're not forced to, but if you choose to do it, it can be really wonderful and life-giving. My channel. My name is Caitlin and I run the blog called Mrs. Midwest. This is your first time visiting one of my videos. I first of all want to say thank you for clicking on my face and seeing what this is all about. You are so welcome here. And to all my returning viewers and subscribers, I just want to say thank you. You guys are some of the loveliest women I have ever had the pleasure of interacting with. You are so kind, encouraging, and eager to improve and unite with other people. And it's just really exciting to see your enthusiasm for these ideas and topics, and honestly, to just know I'm not alone in caring about these kind of things. It's really exciting. Today's video is a topic that was brought up by a viewer. I have seen this come up a couple times, and I was really excited to talk about it. We are going to talk today about how I practice modesty. Now, I need to begin by saying I don't believe in forced modesty. I think that practicing modesty should be something that you choose on your own. It's a personal decision, and if it brings joy and life and and happiness to your life, pursue it. You know, that's kind of, that's my rule of thumb. For me, it has a lot to do with my faith and my religion. I think that you need to weigh those things on your own and not go off just what I'm saying, because this is my story. This is how I practice modesty and it's how I express myself through modesty. It has nothing to do with my beliefs of what every single person should do. As most of you are probably aware, I am a Christian. I grew up in a Christian um, environment. It wasn't particularly orthodox or anything. It was a community of Dutch people that had immigrated from the Netherlands to Canada. And that's where I grew up. I grew up surrounded by a lot of Dutch heritage, um, Christian reformed religion, you know, wholesome family oriented. Now that we're adults, I see that a lot of my friends that grew up the same way I do also practice modesty in a similar way. It's just, I think, what we're comfortable with. I personally always feel happier when I'm practicing modesty. It's just the way I feel comfortable in myself, comfortable in the way I'm presenting myself. And, and it's personal to me in the sense that it does make me happier and it's all about my faith. So how does modesty connect with my faith? So scripture is very clear that we are not to be a distraction from the gospel of Christ. So I consider my body a temple of the Holy Spirit. So that reflects what I eat and how I care for my body, my skin, all of that. But then it also reflects back on how I adorn my body. I don't ever like to look very frumpy, slouchy, like, like a blob, like I don't like feeling that way. But I also don't like dressing in a way that would draw a ton of attention to myself either. I like dressing in a balanced way where I feel pretty and elegant and classy. So that's kind of how I approach it from the concept of your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If you're not a believer, I still feel like you could approach modesty from the idea that my body matters. It is valuable and because of that I'm going to adorn it in a way that keeps it more exclusive and that's always what I think about with modesty how can I keep my body um, exclusive how can I keep it exclusive to me and to my husband and to like the privacy of my own home you know I don't believe that every single person out there has earned the right to view my body you know I think it's fine to be attractive. I think it's fine to be beautiful, but then there's like this line we can cross where we're stepping out from beautiful and into a more sensual realm. So the way I approach clothing is often, is this sensual? Does it give off a sensual vibe? Does it elicit ideas of sex? Personally, I like to keep those things private. We can't stop people from thinking like lustful thoughts about us. Um, but I feel like we can also be mindful of the fact that what we do wear does also communicate a message to people. 
and elicit a response from people. It's not our responsibility what other people do when they see us or when they look at our outfits or what they think, you know, there's evil people out there. But I also like to be aware of the message I'm sending with my clothing or with my body, etc. I do practice modesty, but I don't view it as a negative thing. I view it as a very exciting thing and almost like an equalizer because a lot of men, most men in the world also practice modesty. You know, it's weird if a guy wears like a very low cut shirt or very short shorts when he's out on the town, like that just looks weird. You know, I feel like when I dress modest and men dress modestly, it's, it's like I get to be on that same playing field. I'm not a sex object, I'm a woman. And yeah, I can be pretty, but I'm not a sex object. And I think that's what modesty brings to the table for me. You have to be careful of putting yourself in that role where you are something to be gawked at. And, and when you do do that, you know, you're inviting a certain type of guy. And I think that when men see flesh, when they see skin, it communicates sexual availability. It's important to be aware that when guys look at you, they view you differently than you view women. They view you differently than you view yourself. If no one told you that, I'm sorry. I have to be honest. You know, I was just thinking, so this is my second attempt making this video because I was like, well, I'm gonna get a lot of hate. But then I remember back when I was 12, when I was 13, when I was 14, and my mom gave me books about purity and modesty and like how thankful I am for that because someone told me, hey, you don't have to live like this. There's an alternative way. That's all I'm saying today. You don't have to live like the culture. There's an alternative way to live in modesty and still be attractive, still have wonderful men attracted to you, still feel professional, still feel beautiful, but not be a sex object. And and that's awesome. Nowadays, you have a very feminist narrative where women feel empowered in their flesh, in their nudity, in, in embracing that because I think a lot of women feel uncomfortable in, in the nude. And so when they show that to the world, it's like they're saying, I'm not ashamed of my nudity anymore. And that's empowering. And I can kind of, I can see kind of where they're coming from. Like that logic kind of makes sense. But the problem with that is, is again, People don't perceive you the way you perceive yourself. So just because you're uncomfortable in your nudity doesn't mean some creep over here thinks you look bad. No. So when you offer yourself in fleshly nudity to the world to empower yourself, to show yourself, I can be nude and still feel good about myself, these guys, are they don't care. They're just benefiting from looking at your naked body. They never thought you looked bad. They like flesh. And you're feeding into that. And I'd be careful about that. So be careful about what empowers you. Think about true, equal rights. Honestly, I'd rather wear a, a nice amount of makeup, a nice dress, and feel elegant, and move into my day interacting with men, and being taken seriously as a woman, instead of sending the message that I'm sexually available. Because the truth is I'm not sexually available. <laughs> my sexuality is reserved for my husband. It will be till the day I die. And so, that is why, another reason I, I am modest, some guy over there has not earned the right to view my naked body. He didn't marry me. He didn't marry me. He didn't commit to me for life. I owe him nothing. Nothing. So I keep that private. It's exclusive. It's an exclusive VIP party of one. My husband. <laughs> and that's fine. Like, that's how I express it. I also want to add here that modesty is so cultural. It all has to do with where you live and even the time you live in. You know, in Victorian times, a very pushed up bosom, cleavage, everyone had that. Everyone had their cleavage on for show, but God forbid you showed a thigh, you know? But nowadays, we see thighs everywhere and I, I would almost say cleavage isn't as popular in the West right now. And so this all goes into my next point, which is modesty is all about context. You know, a mini dress at church is going to look kind of immodest, but a mini dress at the beach is going to look super modest because everybody around you is wearing bikinis. You know, so when I approach modesty, when I approach buying modest clothes, I don't have like a blueprint of, okay, it can't be higher than here and I can't go lower than there and I can't go shorter than 
here <laughs> you know i more do it based on context so if i i do have a couple mini dresses in my closet but i wouldn't wear them to church i wouldn't wear them to the grocery store i'd wear them to our family cottage or to the beach or on a hot summer day you know when those things are more acceptable so when you practice modesty it's actually more about discretion it's not about rules it's more about thinking where am i going today Who's going to be around me? And what's the social context of this, of this event? You know, it's all about the context. And with that other point, I want to talk about modesty online. So I also practice modesty online. You would be pretty hard pressed to find a photo of me in a bathing suit on the internet. <laughs> I don't want that out there. Again, I don't believe that every single internet stranger has earned the right to see my flesh. I just don't. I like keeping that private. <laughs> I think practicing modesty online is honestly more than clothing. It's a lot about what type of pictures are you putting up? What message are they sending? Um, and, and what's your heart behind those images? I would also say that like modesty won't inhibit your chances with men, but it will inhibit your chances with a certain type of guy. I asked my husband about modesty in preparation for this video, and he said from a male perspective, and I've heard this before, that he likes it because there's a level of mystery to it. And, and they like that mystery of not knowing what's going on behind the curtains necessarily. And, and that's attractive in its own way. A lot of very traditional, religious, conservative kind of men like modesty. So if you're concerned about attracting a husband or attracting a boyfriend, and you're wondering, okay, if I cover up my body, is that gonna kind of cut down my pool of men? I would say, yes, it's going to cut out your pool of men, but in a good way. Whether we like it or not, our clothing communicates a message. And when you remain modest, it communicates a message of, I have more about me than my body. And, and that's always what I'm thinking about. I think about what's the context that I'm wearing this piece of clothing in? How is this reflecting back on myself as a temple of the Holy Spirit? And, and what message am I communicating with my clothes? Am I presenting myself as a sex object and is that what I want? Basically for me, I think about, do I have ulterior motives for wearing this piece of clothing? And if my motive is to draw attention to myself, my body, to get lustful looks from guys, like then I won't wear it. You know, and then sometimes I've, I've had to be honest with myself, you know, when I had a pretty sexy dress on and I'm like, ooh, I feel good in this. You know, why was I wearing that? And I had to be honest with myself and say, I think I want attention. <laughs> and, and it's okay to want attention. We're human. We all want attention. But there's better ways to get attention than by dressing in a really immodest outfit. There's ways to get attention from people who genuinely love you and know you. And maybe you're just feeling like you need more attention in general or love. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. But immodest clothing might not be the way to achieve the attention you crave. So that's a little bit about why I practice modesty. It's a bit about my story with modesty. And now I want to go into how do I find modest clothing? Yes, the majority of clothes out there is going to be immodest. It's cheaper to make immodest clothing because there's less fabric. But you can find modest clothing almost at any store. You just have to look for certain pieces. And so I would encourage you to begin with a Pinterest board and begin pinning pieces of clothing that that you want to build your wardrobe around and then go out into the world or go online and begin looking for those pieces. I will wear long skirts and I find a lot of those second hand. I've also purchased clothing online. Any online website, even like an Amazon, you know, you can find a lot of really beautiful, modest clothing. I get my pieces of clothing everywhere. I even have some pieces of clothing from Walmart. So I would encourage you, don't think so much about where to buy modest clothes. Think more about the type of clothes you want to buy. I would encourage you to be very loose with this practice of modesty and not view it as something that has like hard and fast rules. Instead, I would think about what you feel comfortable with. Um, I would think about your faith if you have one and how you want to express yourself there. And finally, I would encourage you to think about what message you want to communicate and, and what type of clothes do that for you. Again, I don't go around thinking everyone should wear turtlenecks or everyone should wear this or that. I don't believe that. 
But I think that modesty has its benefits. I think modesty is positive. And I think modesty, if you choose to do it, if you're not forced to, but if you choose to do it, it can be really wonderful and life-giving. I'm not like this end-all be-all guru about modesty, but I do try to practice it, especially online, because I have no clue who is looking at this stuff. I have no clue who's looking at my Instagram. I think that's another thing to remember. You, you don't know who's looking at your photos. You don't know what they're doing with those photos online. And it's important to be mindful of the fact that there is evil out there and there are bad people and, and there are people who will objectify you. So just be mindful of that. And if you're okay with that, you do you girl. That's fine. I'm not okay with that. So that's why, another reason I practice modesty. And I would encourage you to not view clothing through your lens as a woman, but try, try as hard as you can to view what do men see? What are they thinking when they're seeing me in this outfit? And be mindful of that. You know, be respectful. Be respectful of other people trying to exist in the world. And finally, modesty does not have to be frumpy. You don't have to look like a dugger and you don't have to stop wearing pants. It's all about context. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like my voice is gone after making this video, but I just want you to know that I appreciate all of you. And if you liked this video, please like it. I feel like it's going to get a lot of dislikes, so I would appreciate any likes I can get. And share it and subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notification bell. And if you're interested in things like a day in the life of a homemaker, follow me on Instagram. I always put it on my Instagram story. So in total, have a blessed and wonderfully feminine day.